we're going to take derivatives of exponentials and logarithms. First, let's do a review. This is a very basic exponential. Okay, e is a constant, about 2.7, much more, and a few more decimals. But it's a constant raised to the power of x. We know that this is graphed as, in the middle, you'll have 0, 1 as a y-intercept. As you recall, this function increases to the right and is asymptotic to y equals 0 to the left. Okay. Now, the domain of this function, the domain is all possible numbers that can be used as input into the function. You can actually tell what the domain is by seeing how far to the left the graph goes on the x-axis and how far to the right it goes. This goes back to negative infinity and as far forward as positive infinity. So we get all real numbers as a domain. Simply saying that we can put anything we want to into this function as an input. Next. Let's look at the inverse of the um, exponential functions, which is the logarithms. Log base e of x is the inverse function for this guy. And the way that we show the log of base e is by using ln. So ln of x is still saying log base e. Darken that up a little bit. Okay, so the inverse function for the exponential will have the point one zero, and as we remember for the logarithm, it increases to the right, a little slower than the exponential, and instead of being asymptotic to y equals zero, the horizontal line, this will be asymptotic to x equals zero. Now, as far as the domain goes, you'll notice there's less of domain with the logarithmic function than there was with the exponential. The domain here, you can only go far, as far back on the x's as just before zero, and you can go as far right as positive infinity. So we have less domain to work with than um, the exponential function. We're actually going to try to fix that and try to get more domain out of this. We won't be able to get the zero in as a domain value, but we can basically get the negative x's in. We do it with this. Natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, what this gives us it gives us the ability to put in x's as usual into the function, positive x's, and get the same graph. 1, 0, increasing to the right, asymptotic to the left. But we can also put in negative x's because the absolute value will turn the final number positive and you can take the log of that. Um, so we can also put in negative numbers as well. And the other side of the graph will be a reflection across the y-axis. Should I say the other part of the graph? So, using the absolute value, we actually recapture more domain than we would without it. So, domain is from negative infinity to zero, and union zero to positive infinity. Okay, and more domain is better. Now, let's look at the, deri the um, derivative functions of exponentials and logarithms. If f is the function, I'm uh, sorry, if f is the um, exponential function e to the x, 
the derivative of e to the x will be again e to the x. Now that's very powerful. What this is saying is that the output to the original function also matches the slopes of the function. In other words, let's say we say x is um, 2 and we find the instantaneous rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change which comes from the slope here. Well, if we input 2, the slope at that spot will be, let's say, um, I'm thinking of probably about 5, 6, or 7, let's say 7 yada, 7 point yada. Well, the same answer from the slope is also the same value of output that we get from the original function. This is the only function where the slopes actually are the same as the output y values for the function. Therefore, we can graph the same function and call it the slopes of the original function because they both have the same exact values. The slopes and the values of the original function. So, the derivative graph looks like this. It has the same nature. Okay. And again, e raised to the x is the only graph that does this. Next, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over x. Okay, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over x. But here's the problem. When you graph 1 over x, you get a couple asymptotes, x equals 0 and y equals 0. Those don't hurt anything. But take a look at your graph. Your graph exists on the right side and also exists on the left side. These are the slopes for this function right here. The problem is 1 over x comes with the right side and the left side, whereas the original function only comes with the right side. Therefore, this part does not uh, reflect anything going over here. The way to handle that is two ways. One cheap way to handle it is just to eliminate the left side of the derivative of, of um, natural log of x. The way that you do that is you say, oh, the answer is 1 over x, but you can only use 0 through infinity for a domain. Okay? So that means every time you get a derivative, you have to write this part right here. And that gets a little tedious, but it eliminates the idea that there was a left side. Another way to handle this is actually create a um, logarithm that does have a left side. And the absolute value does that. So when you want the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x, it'll be 1 over x with no restrictions. So you'll get to use the right side and the left side. This represents the slopes of this curve right here, and this guy represents the slopes of this curve right there. Okay, now we're going to take a look at um, derivatives overall for exponentials and logarithms.